hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today i'm going to be talking about investing in property for beginners right for people who are starting from scratch this is your video and make sure that you take notes and before we go any further uh, please guys i'm not a financial advisor i'm just a guy who's sharing his thoughts so take whatever i'm saying here with a bit of a salt like i've said that most of the advices or most of the ideas that i share in the channel they might be uh, a bit unorthodox uh, oh, english yeah so yeah so so take it with a bit of a pinch so if you knew consider subscribing down below and comment i have subscribed and i will make sure that i will personally respond to your comment and i will give it a heart so back to the topic of the day so if you are somebody who's saying i don't have any property right and i am working and i am i am in a better state maybe let's say i've done a pre-approval and i've seen that i've qualified for a house right and you're currently renting maybe you're renting in a one bedroom or in a, you're renting a one room in a shared house it's okay this is good for you so instead of going and buy a house immediately save that money right and then you go and buy a property or you go and buy a, a, an apartment whether it's a one bedroom apartment or a two bedroom apartment or three bedroom apartment the more the merrier and then what you do is you convert the property into a shared communal. The same thing, if you're staying in a communal, you make it the same thing, you know. You will rent each bedroom or yeah, you will rent each bedroom to somebody, to a professional or to a family, depending or whatever. You rent it. You don't give it to a single family because if you give it to a single family, you're going to be getting rent from that one family. So now you're trying to boost, you know, you're trying to increase the muscle of your rental, you know each one bed is rented to a different person so it's so that they can give you so that 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 house can give you more you know so that apartment can give you more in terms of rental right so you continue even though you have bought that property you continue renting wherever you're renting you continue staying there and then what you do is the money that you were gonna pay on the house that you were gonna buy um, the house that you pre-qualified for, you, you you take that money, you keep on putting it into the bank, right? You don't touch it, you don't spend it, you are pretending as if you already bought that house, even though you still stay in the same place, you know? You take that money, you save it, you take that money, you save it, you take that money, you save it. And then the rental that you're getting from the communal house or property or apartment that you have, you take it and then it pays for itself, right? It pays for itself, it pays for its maintenance in terms of the rates and the levels if it's in a complex, you know, it does that. And the extra that you get from there, you take it and then you top up the bond, right? You top up the bond so that you can kill the interest, right? You kill the interest of the existing property. And then on the other side, you continue to save for your new house, right? You do that maybe for two years or for three years, you know? After that three years, you go and take that money that you've been saving, you know, you and then you also approach the bank regarding the structure that you have for the equity that is in the property. You take that equity, you take the money that you've been saving, you go and buy your house cash, right? You buy that house cash. <laughs> you buy that house cash, right? After you've bought that house cash, you still have your property that is making you money on the side. And then you have this house that you have bought in cash, right? Then you can decide whether you want to move into that house or you want to continue with the strategy. If you want to move into that house, you can leave your the, the current space that you're renting and move into that house. I know this is going to be um uncomfortable you know because we, we we always want to move to a bigger place and all those things but if you're still alone you're not married you don't have any family you don't have any kids then it's good and even if it's you and your wife you can it's a sacrifice that you make guys within five years you can be sorted you know so maybe this is the sacrifice that you guys are gonna have to make because investing is risky and investing requires one to take risk so you can move into that property 
or is looking for the next property. So if you want to move into that property, what you can do is you have two properties. You have the one that is not yet paid up in, is, is not yet paid in, in, in full, right? In this one that you're renting it out. And then you have this other one that you bought. So depending on maybe it's a two bedroom or it's a three bedroom house that you bought. So what you can do, you move into that house right you move into that house and then you take one room the biggest you know you take that room and it will be your room and then you take the other two rooms or you take the other extra room you rent it out to somebody and then you make it a communal right it's your house but you're renting it out you're living in it but yet not the whole space but you're renting it out to somebody else right so you make it a communal space so you've got those two properties this one is making you money and this one is also making you money you continue living like that maybe for the next two years or three years after three years you what you will do is <laughs> you will go and buy another property right so what you can do is if you if, if, if in that time you don't have any money in cash right if you don't have any money in cash what you can do is go to the bank, mortgage, remortgage the property that you have that is paid up in cash. Take that money and go and buy another property. You buy cash, right? Now, after buying that property cash, you have three properties. You have this one that you have made it a communal that is making you money. And then you have this one that we have refinanced. And that property is also making you money because you have tenants. Even though you occupy one room, but you have tenants that are paying you money, right? And then you have this third property that you have that is bought cash. Now, this third property, make sure that it has land, right? Make sure that it has land. So if it has land, which is good. Now, after you bought the third property which you bought cash, refinance it, you know? Refinance it and then take that money and build flats. You build a block of flats. Like I said, you buy a property that has the biggest land. You build those flats. And then after you have built those flats with that money, you tenant them. You, 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 know, you, you, you list them out and then they make you money. Now you have three properties and then you've got this one that has flats that is making you money. So what you will do with all that money that you're getting from the flats, you, 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 know, you, you pump it. You pump it on these properties that you have, you know. Because by now you have three properties that are that are refinanced, you know. You're still paying the bond, you're still paying the bond, you're still paying the bond. So the money that you make on this one, you continue topping it up on the bond, right? So that you can kill the interest. And then on this one, you have the tenant, maybe you have two tenants in the three bedroom. You, you, you top up, you know, you top up on the bond that you're paying on this one. And then on this third one, you take all that money because you, you have listed the property itself and then you have listed the, 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 the block of flats that you've built. So all that money that you have, you, you're receiving it from that. You don't go and spend it on a vacation in Dubai. No, no, no. You use it to pay off your debt. You know, you do that for the next two years or three years. Who knows, you might have enough money to settle all the debts and then you'll be sitting with three properties and a block of flats that are all paid up then you can decide whether you still want to continue with the very same technique so you can use that as your blueprint and by in 10 years time you can have a large portfolio i know they say debt is bad yes debt is bad but you can use debt to build wealth nobody is comfortable doing this but you gotta start somewhere and unfortunately some of us were not given a golden you know platter or a golden spoon to start with you have to start from the ground and build you know you have to start from nothing and build yourself you know and i believe that if you are if you have that passion you can leave a lot of generational wealth for your family you know, so that your kids don't start from zero like you. They start from hero. They start from hero and continue from there. So, guys, um, I hope you know you 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 will receive this uh, this video and then you will make it your own. Tyler, make it so that it can fit your needs because people are not the same. Peace out. That's all for today. Thanks, guys.